In this episode, we look at the tiny leaps you can take that may just change your life. Get excited, because this is Tiny Leaps. Big change. Welcome to another episode of Tiny Leaps. Big changes where I share simple research based strategies you can use to get more out of your life in under 15 minutes. Now, it's no surprise to anyone who's familiar with this show that I love little things you can do, like little changes that make massive, massive differences over time. In fact, and I don't know if you realize this, but that's the name of the show. So it really should not be surprising to you that when it comes an opportunity to share something with you that is highly practical, highly actionable, and highly, highly valuable, I'm super stoked. So I love the like deep dive psychology episodes. I love the interviews. I love all of the other things that I do, but these might be my favorite episodes. And this one is not going to miss either. I've got three very, very simple, very straightforward things you can do that when practiced, especially when practiced over time, can massively improve the quality of your life, massively shift the outcome of certain situations and lead to you feeling more fulfilled and more capable. So I'm super excited to share that with you. Uh, Before we jump into it, I do want to remind you, if you haven't picked it up already, I just released a free PDF on how to find your passion. It's based on one of my recent episodes on that topic. It's a super simple PDF. It's one page. It's literally a Venn diagram of the three questions you need to ask yourself in order to find that thing you are passionate about and excited to work on. So if that sounds like something you would get value from, head over to T lbc.co slash passion, or click the link in the description of this episode to download it. It's hundred percent free. All you do is enter an email and then I'll send it straight to you. So check that out. And without further ado, let's get into today's tiny leaps. Now, the first thing we're going to discuss is why you should uh, always do the smallest action first. And what I mean by this is let's say uh, you have a new goal or a new habit you want to build or uh, just a new behavior you want to introduce into your life. The best way to get started is to immediately or as close to immediately as possible, do the smallest version of that thing or the smallest action that moves you in the direction of that thing. Now, to give a a crystal clear example, let's say you want to work on your fitness. That might mean registering for a gym membership. That might mean figuring out where your gym is and, and which route you'll need to drive home in order to get there. It's the stuff that matters, but isn't the action itself. Now, why do I recommend this? Well, motivation is at its highest when we first decide that we want to do something. And if you think about that for a second, it makes perfect sense. The motivation is there. That's why we decided we wanted to do it in the first place. In those moments, we are more motivated for this specific behavior than we are likely to be for the entire rest of our journey with that behavior. And so it makes perfect sense to use that energy immediately. The longer we sit on things, the less likely we are to do them. Now, this is incredibly effective when we're trying to avoid taking a certain behavior. So this is why people recommend that if you want to save money, then you should add a 24 hour sort of delay between deciding you want to buy something and actually buying that thing. In that time, you think about it for a little bit longer, you sober up a little bit, and before you know it, you don't really want that thing anymore or you're deciding not to purchase it. The same thing works in reverse, where we are more motivated to take a certain behavior or to purchase something the minute we decide that it's what we want to do. And so if we can take any action immediately, we can start the process and ride the momentum. And that's the second key here. Momentum is critical when it comes to developing and building new behaviors. It's significantly easier, and I've talked about this on the show before, it's significantly easier to continue doing behaviors that we identify with and behaviors that we have a little bit of momentum for than it is to start. That hump of starting a new thing, especially when you don't have that starter motivation, 
is insanely challenging to get over. But once you start, once you've sort of adopted a little bit of the identity, the type of person who blank, once you do that, you're able to get moving and keep moving because you have that motivation, that starter energy pushing you forward. So by taking some small action instantly, we give ourselves the highest chance of following through and we allow ourselves to ride the momentum so that we can uh, expand that initial motivation longer. So that's the first tiny leap. Take that first small action instantly or as close to instantly as you can get. Now, the second thing is to thank somebody for their support. And this is even better if you do it in written form. Now, here's the thing. It's very difficult, and I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's very difficult to be both upset and grateful at the same time. You've probably heard that before. You've heard some version of it. A gratitude practice has been proven to improve feelings of well-being, improve happiness levels, or rather contentment levels. And so by practicing gratitude, we enable ourselves to shift out of the depressive and down states that sometimes we find ourselves in. Now, of course, I want to add the caveat here that I'm not really talking about clinical depression, diagnosis depression or even undiagnosed clinical depression like there are things that this isn't going to be helpful for but for the everyday slump when you're just not feeling your best when you're just feeling a little bit down taking a moment to thank somebody is significantly more valuable than just practicing gratitude because when you just practice gratitude maybe you identify these things and you say it out loud or write it down and that's helpful when you actually express the thank you, the gratitude to another person, you're giving it to them as a gift and improving their day, but you're also being forced to deal with it directly. Every time we communicate to another person, we have to translate the thoughts and ideas that are in our minds into language that they can understand. And in that translation process, we have to process the information. That's exactly what you get to benefit from when you actually deliver the thank you personally. Now, of course, you can write it down in a letter and give it to them. You can say it to them, whatever way makes sense for you and the relationship you have with that person. But by going through the process of communicating it to them, you are actually processing the feelings and the emotions, and it'll help you to recognize that feeling over time and hold on to the feeling a little bit longer. And the last piece of advice is to take a deeper breath. Now, what do I mean by this? Well, most of the day, most of the time when we are go, go, go in a hurry, we are actually breathing shallow. That's when we're breathing and the air is instantly coming back out and we're not truly absorbing that oxygen. We're not truly taking it in and taking the moment required to be at peace as a result of this breath. Now, you know me, if you listen to this show or watch this show, I'm not big on woo woo like kind of stuff, but there is massive, massive value in focusing on the breath as a source of regulation. And what I mean by that is as a constant, as something we can rely on, something we can come back to that's going to have a roughly regular cadence, but one that we can control, that we can step into and choose the cadence of. It's something we all do, we all rely on, and that connects us throughout the world, but it's something that we can choose to shift in any way we choose to do so. And that level of practicing control, not only does it have the, the actual physical benefits of more oxygen going to the brain, clearing up the way that you're thinking and removing some of that brain fog, and also reducing anxiety and feelings of depression, it also has the value of giving you control, or at least a sense of control, a sense of control over your life and over where things are going. If you can control your breath, then there's no reason you can't control everything else that you need to deal with. So taking a deeper breath can be for many, and it is for me personally, just a simple moment, a single moment of reprieve, a moment where we can remind ourselves who is in control of our lives and a moment where we can clear up the brain fog, clear up the anxiety and sit a little bit deeper in our own skin so that we can show up better in the world around us. So thank you so much for being here. If this was helpful and you want more, 
find the podcast on YouTube. The link is in the description of this episode. You can also leave a comment on this video. I would love to connect with you. I'd love to have this conversation and chat with you and just share our journeys with each other because we're all going through a personal development journey. And I think we can learn an enormous amount from each other. Pick up a copy of How to Find Your Passion. It's a free PDF I put together. Just head over to tlbc.co slash passion. Link is in the description as well. And remember that all big changes come from the tiny leaps you take every day.